Talking about porn can be tricky. That's why we created an interactive conversation guide called Let's Talk About Porn. Simply select who you'd like to talk to, your partner, child, friends, parents, or even a stranger, and select the type of conversation you'd like to have. We'll walk you through a healthy way to approach this taboo topic in a productive conversation. Let's Talk About Porn is available for free, both in English and Spanish, so you can be prepared to talk when someone asks why you're listening to a podcast about the harms of porn. Access the guide and start talking at ftnd.org forward slash blueprint. That's ftnd.org forward slash blueprint. My name is Garrett Johnson, and you're listening to Consider Before Consuming, a podcast by Fight the New Drug. And in case you're new here, Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science, facts, and personal accounts. During these episodes, we cover a wide variety of topics that may be triggering to some. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to part 14 of our Get the Facts series, where we explore the research on a specific topic surrounding porn's harms on individuals, relationships, and society to help you be more informed and empowered with the facts. Today's episode is how porn can harm consumers' sex lives. You can find the sources to the claims made in this episode or read along at ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. Now, let's get to the episode. Back in the 1950s, two Nobel Prize winning researchers named Timbergen and Magnus played a trick on butterflies. After figuring out which marks on female butterfly wings were most eye-catching to males, the researchers created their own cardboard butterfly models. They exaggerated the patterns on the wings to make them brighter and flashier than would ever be found in nature. Essentially, they created the world's first butterfly supermodels. And the male butterflies fell for it. They went straight for the cardboard mock-ups and tried to mate with them, ignoring the real female butterflies that were right there in plain sight. The males gave all of their attention to the exaggerated pictures. Sound familiar? Like the duped butterflies, porn consumers can get so obsessed with chasing flashy fantasies that they miss out on real life and real relationships. This is one of the big lies of porn, that you can have it both ways indefinitely. You can enjoy the immediate, exaggerated gratification of thousands of virtual sex partners and also have the long-term satisfaction of a real committed relationship. The truth is, porn can take a heavy toll on real-life relationships. Many people report feeling distressed or hurt by their partner's porn consumption. But even if a partner has no issues with their significant other's porn habit, it can still damage the relationship. In fact, research consistently shows that porn consumption is associated with poorer relationship quality and sexual dissatisfaction. The idea that porn is a personal decision that doesn't affect anyone else is simply not supported by the research. One of the common defenses of porn is that porn is just watching people have sex, and what could be more natural and normal than that? While healthy sex is natural and normal, porn is something entirely different. Make no mistake, porn is a product. Pornographers have a lot to gain by driving traffic to their sites, so they dress up their product to grab your attention. That dressing up is exactly what makes porn so unnatural. Consider how professional porn performers often have a whole team of people to make every detail look perfect, from directing and filming to lighting and makeup, maybe even a plastic surgeon or two to thank. With some careful editing, a typical 45-minute porn flick that took three days to shoot can appear to have happened all at once, without a break. Film from the right angles at the right moments, edit out all of the mistakes, Photoshop away any imperfections, add a catchy soundtrack, and you have something most definitely not like real sex. You end up with something that is definitely more cardboard than butterfly. This is especially concerning considering that porn can shape the way people think about sex. 
Despite how unrealistic pornography is, research indicates that many young people report trying to copy porn in their own sexual encounters, and that the pressure to imitate porn was often an aspect of unhealthy relationships. Studies also show that increased pornography consumption is associated with the enjoyment of degrading, uncommon, or aggressive sexual behaviors. And a number of other studies also show that the sexual scripts in pornography can socialize consumers towards sexual aggression, cheating, and risky sexual behaviors. Leading relationship experts Drs. John and Julie Gottman of the world-renowned Gottman Institute have expressed serious concerns about the effects of pornography on sexual relationships. They explain, and I quote, Pornography may be, just such, a supernormal stimulus. With pornography use, much more of a normal stimulus may eventually be needed to achieve the response a supernormal stimulus evokes. In contrast, ordinary levels of the stimulus are no longer interesting. This may be how normal sex becomes much less interesting for porn consumers. The data supports this conclusion. In fact, use of pornography by one partner leads the couple to have far less sex and ultimately reduces relationship satisfaction. End quote. These concerns about realistic expectations are particularly important when it comes to children and teens who are still forming their understanding of sex and relationships. With so many young people viewing pornography so early in their lives, many end up internalizing toxic and harmful messages about sex. Learning about sex from porn also means absorbing a lot of dangerous ideas about sexuality and women. Research estimates that as few as 1 in 3 porn videos and as many as 9 in 10 videos portrays violence or physical aggression, and that women are the targets of aggression approximately 97% of the time. And while many people turn to amateur porn, which claims to be more natural and ethical, Research suggests that amateur porn usually teaches the same toxic attitudes and reproduces the same false stereotypes as professionally produced porn. In fact, it's often worse. Another reason why some porn consumers struggle with their sexual health and understanding is because of the nature of porn itself. Porn portrays people as little more than bodies that exist for the viewer's sexual pleasure. Unfortunately, those unhealthy perceptions can start creeping into how consumers see themselves and other people in real life. For example, research has found that pornography consumption is associated with increased objectification, greater acceptance of violence against women, and actual acts of sexual violence. With habitual porn consumption, it can become more difficult for consumers to see themselves and others as anything more than sexual objects, and as a result, it can be more challenging to develop and nurture real relationships. There's a certain way of experiencing sexual arousal that is the opposite of closeness, said Dr. Gary Brooks, a psychologist who has worked with porn addicts for the last 30 years. Dr. Brooks continues, and I quote, At best, it can be managed somewhat by some people, but most of the time it creates a barrier that poisons relationships, end quote. The Gottmans also explain, and I quote, When watching pornography, the user is in total control of the sexual experience, in contrast to normal sex in which people are sharing control with the partner. Thus, a porn user may form the unrealistic expectation that sex will be under only one person's control. The relationship goal of intimate connection is confounded and ultimately lost. End quote. When someone regularly consumes porn, they can become accustomed to being aroused by the imagery and endless novelty found in porn. Pretty soon, natural turn-ons and real relationships aren't enough and many porn consumers find they can't get aroused by anything but porn. 30 years ago, when a man developed erectile dysfunction, ED, it was almost always because he was getting older, usually past 40, and as his body aged, it became more difficult to maintain an erection. Chronic ED in anyone under 35 was nearly unheard of, but those were the days before internet porn. 
These days, online message boards are flooded with complaints from porn consumers in their teens and 20s complaining that they can't maintain an erection. They want to know what's wrong with their body. But the problem isn't in the penis. It's in the brain. While research on the links between compulsive porn consumption and sexual dysfunctions is ongoing, many therapists and clinicians are reporting a rise of patients seeking help for such problems. The term porn-induced erectile dysfunction, for example, was coined by Dr. Abraham Morgan Taylor, the director of men's health and a clinical professor of urology at Harvard Medical School. Speaking about porn-induced erectile dysfunction, Dr. Morgan Taylor said, and I quote, I'm worried. I'm worried about the impact of porn on men and on women. A lot of men who grow up now watching internet porn learn their sexuality and how to get stimulated down there in a way that is not mimicked by actual sex. What porn has figured out is what really works for the brain. It's maximum stimulus. End quote. Ironically, despite porn's promise of improving consumer sex lives, there is growing evidence that porn consumption is linked to sexual dysfunction. Research indicates that compulsive pornography consumption is directly related to erectile dysfunction, sexual dysfunction for both men and women, problems with arousal and sexual performance, difficulty reaching orgasm, and decreased sexual satisfaction. In one neuroscientific study on compulsive pornography consumers, Researchers found that in 11 out of 19 subjects, porn consumption had lowered the consumer's sex drive and or ability to maintain arousal in real-life sexual encounters, yet were still able to sexually respond to porn. Like Timbergen's butterflies, porn can leave a consumer preferring unrealistic internet porn over an actual partner. The research is clear. Porn is not a harmless pastime, especially when it's hurting a romantic partner. But the research is also clear that shame is not an effective way to motivate someone to change. According to one study of individuals trying to quit porn, researchers found that shame actually predicted increased pornography consumption, while guilt predicted sustainable change. So if you're trying to give up porn, be kind to yourself and be patient with your progress. Like anything, it takes time for the brain to recover, but daily efforts make a big difference in the long run. The kind of intimacy porn offers is nothing more than empty sexual stimulation, while real intimacy offers so much more. Real connection is a world of satisfaction and excitement that doesn't disappear when the screen goes off. It's the breathtaking risk of being vulnerable with another human being. It's inviting them not just into your bed, but into your heart and life. Real intimacy is about what we give, not just what we get. It's other-centered, not self-centered. Intimacy is understanding someone at a level porn never attempts, and having the life-altering experience of having them listen, really listen, to you in return. It's seeing yourself through others' eyes and caring about others as much as you care about yourself. It's the astonishing, baffling, wonderful experience that artists and philosophers have been trying to describe for centuries. Tinbergen's butterflies were simply reacting to instinct when they were fooled by the supermodel decoys. But you can choose to recognize porn for the deception it is. You can reject porn's toxic messages and choose real life, real relationships, and real love. For those listening who feel they are struggling with pornography, you're not alone. Check out Fortify, a science-based recovery platform dedicated to helping you find lasting freedom from pornography. Fortify now offers a free experience for both teens and adults. Connect with others, learn about your unwanted porn habit, and track your recovery journey. There is hope. Did you know that, as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, your donations to fight the new drug are 100% tax deductible in the United States? We rely on donations from our fighters to support our efforts and help us create resources that educate countless individuals on the harms of pornography, like this podcast. Get your tax deductible donations in before the end of the year to report them on your 2022 taxes. 
Make a tax-deductible donation to support the Consider Before Consuming podcast today at ftnd.org forward slash support. That's ftnd.org forward slash support. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Consider Before Consuming. Consider Before Consuming is brought to you by Fight the New Drug. Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science, facts, and personal accounts. If you've benefited from listening to Consider Before Consuming, consider subscribing and leaving a review. Again, big thanks to you for listening to this episode. As you go about your day, we invite you to increase your self-awareness, look both ways, check your blind spots, and consider before consuming.